Okay, so we're over at my press. Um, I want to get the race out, but I want to save the seal. Although I've got bearings for it, I've got no spare seal. Um, if you try and get the bearing uh, uh, race out, you'll end up damaging that. Uh, the way I do it is I use a press, and I press the entire tube out of this yoke. Uh, and then it pushes the, the race out and the seal at the same time, without causing any damage. There we go, so the race is off and the seal is intact. Okay, so now we're going to push the tube back in. There we go, so we're back in. Uh, now we need to put the seal back in, put the new race on, and start putting it back together. Okay, so not only did we get the race out and save the seal, um, I didn't need to save the seal because one came with the bearing. Uh, it was right underneath, I can see it, so fantastic. Um, I'm not going to grease this yet, I'll grease it after. Uh, So normally we use um, uh, these tubes to push the, the race in, but this is really chunky. Uh, although it just about goes past the top, it touches the thread. So that's no good. Um, I've got um, the kit with all these little tubes in there uh, for removing bearings and bits. I've got the smallest one in, so it sits on the, uh, the actual race the inner race itself and not on the cage and then we'll just build it up and then push it down so we're sitting on a flat piece of um, steel now because we're on the base of this and all we want to do is push it down uh, there's not a lot of room in there so we're going to go down about 15 20 mil and then we'll swap and put another tube on it I always finish the last bit by hand, so I have a feel for it. You can't feel for it when it's done uh, pneumatically. There you go. One bearing fitted. Um, when you've got the tools, it makes life so much easier. Uh, you can do it at home. Uh, it's a lot of butchery, chisels and all sorts, but... Um, sometimes we have to do it that way, but on this occasion, uh, it was reasonably easy. Okay, so we get the bearing races out. As you can see, we've got the seal in here, and this is the race. So we need to go down and over to try and knock these out. As we like making special tools. Is a special tool with a bent end <laughs> specifically for taking these out. So um, we're going to put it through. Steve's just going to line it up and then I'm going to lock it with a special tool number. 
tool two, which is the hammer. Striking special tool number one, which is the fly bar. Yeah, let me let go of it. Back up, back up, back up, back up. There. There we go. There's one. No. Yep. Spin it around. Yep. Spin it around. 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 Spin it Spin it to the back. There you go. There you go, second one out. So we're using a race fitting tool, which is just a tapered aluminium uh, tool. <laughs> That's what it is. Hard to, hard to tell. Oh no, I think we've got a bit more there, Mel. Yeah, a bit more. A bit more. If you look from down the side, you can actually see. Some of the gaps, see that? Yeah. Oh, the tool isn't there. Is it not? Nah. Okay, tool's got a bit of an edge on it, it won't go past. So I'm just gonna run this over to my lathe, just take a little bit off, and then we'll be able to push that all the way home. Okay, took a millimeter off it. There it fits. <laughs> Let's go <get it> home. <laughs> now for the easy one. Okay, I'm just going to grease these up. Uh, there is a way that I do them. Uh, the thing is, with headstock bearings, they are like wheel bearings. But with a wheel bearing, if you just dab the top, because it goes round and round on a hub, it will eventually grease itself. But on a headstock bearing, it's only turning. If anything, lock to lock, it's not even a quarter of a turn. So, to grease these up, hold them with two fingers. I'm just using regular lithium grease. Is it dab it on and then you've got to spin it spin it and spin it until it starts to get really really stiff in your hand sounds <laughs> like a sexual <laughs> innuendo but it isn't <laughs> but now the grease is all the way through and then we can just dab on top is that ready to go in the hole can i can i handle it and put it in for you very good friends. Uh, where's the headstock bit? <laughs> Over there. Over there. Okay, we need to grease this as well. Obviously doing it after you put it on rather than before you put it on. What's that? Well, you could have pre-greased it and shoved it down the shaft. I don't know, because, uh, yeah, ne never grease it before you fit it. Uh, especially if you're working going over by the lathe where there's dirt and crap, all sorts. Uh, you'll end up, this will be like a magnet. It'll collect all your grease up, uh, all the dirt into the grease, and it'll be an unpleasant headstock.
being notchy as as the one you took out. So yeah, do not grease do not pre-grease these. Grease them after. Well, this is definitely more than a manufacturer would put in. Mm. Right, when you fit the headstock back in, you tighten this nut tight as you can absolutely tight as you can um, and then what that does everything settles if uh, those races weren't in all the way it, uh, it beds them in and then you can just do them up just just gently and do it by feel does that feel like Well guys, Saturday morning, I was here till 8 o'clock last night with Steve, as far as we got, head bearings done, which was the, probably the biggest pain in the backside, um, shaved, fresh faced, bike's been loaded tomorrow between uh, 10 and 2, so I've got till tonight to get all this ready to be loaded tomorrow, lot to do, um, I'm probably going to start with the forks because they're probably going to be the most challenging job. Uh, for this morning because I need those done so I can get the forks back in triple clamp the tri triple clamping up top um, Put the bars back in and finish off here air filter get the tank back on and I can start slowly moving backwards um, Before the calipers go back on um, We'll have to do those brake pads with the race pads in it um, uh, We'll just carry on and <laughs> go step by step Right, forks for now. Okay guys, shock absorber dismantling. Um, I've got this set up in my mobile vice. I must have had this vice 25 years. It's gone from workshop to workshop with me. <laughs> um, everyone has their own way of stripping shock absorbers. There's the manual way, there's your way, there's my way, there's YouTube's way. Now I've got my fork upside down and I'm gonna be undoing it from the bottom most people undo it from the other end and work their way down. There's a reason I do it upside down this way. It's because this shock absorber is pretty much locked out on the spring now. So the spring is giving me pressure to this uh, top bolt, but it's not on the, on the top bolt. But it's giving me pressure, it's holding everything tight inside. It gives me opportunity to undo this. When you take everything uh, out the top, and free everything off and take the spring out there's nothing holding this and it just once it loosens it just spins and spins and spins so I use the spring to assist me and I'm doing this belt at the bottom so I'm just gonna get my gun whiz it out and, um, and then we'll strip the other one See, even with the pressure of the spring on there, it's still not uh, under it. Okay. Okay, it's undone. Now why did I change to a smaller gun? 
you would assume a bigger gun would do the job a lot better than a smaller gun. The thing is with a big gun, it needs a lot of load behind it before it'll impact. And this one impacts uh, very, very quickly. So the bolt is now free. Uh, now I need to flip this upside down. When I flip it upside down, oil is going to come out the bottom. Clean tray. I'm going to try and save this oil. If it comes out clean, it's going back in. Uh, Nitron do say you can reuse the oil that's already in there. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, bike's not done a million miles. So I'm going to lay the tray down. I'm going to flip this upside down. Whatever comes out will catch. We'll put it back in the jug. We'll measure it and put it back in. If it needs topping up, we have oils behind us, we can top it up. Uh, so the oil's all drained out um, in the tray. It's not amazing, but it's not horrendous. Um, this takes 7.5 W oil, so I've got some synthetic, which is what we need. So whilst I have it, whilst it's stripped, whilst new stuff's going in, I'm going to change that at the same time. Uh, this particular shock takes 470 mil of oil per leg. Uh, there's no measurement for it, so we'll just put the right amount in. <clears throat> so this is our leg um, to fit these there's a special tool uh, you can get from Nitron I don't have one and hopefully I won't need one <laughs> uh, as you guys know follow my channel I do like to make tools <laughs> uh, but for this one uh, I don't think we'll be bothering making one I should be able to get this in and bolt it up without an issue and the tool we need is a really deep um, socket that goes over the whole leg uh, and goes into these um, splines. Uh, some of the shocks only have this one, so the, the tool is really long. Um, you'll hold it at the bottom, bolt it up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take the top off carefully. Drop the leg in. Uh, we're going to drop a spring in. Uh, new washer. Same bolt. Uh, some people lock like these in. I don't, because it makes them really difficult to get out. Uh, I've never ever had one come out. Um, when you lock tight these in, uh, they do jam. Um, they're supposed to be torqued up, but because we don't have the special tool to hold it, it's difficult to torque, so I'm just gonna be gunning it in. Um, when the spindle's in there, this box never coming out. Even if it comes loose, it will never come out. You may get an oil leak that will give you indication it's come loose, uh, but you'll never ever lose it. Uh, I'm just going to go clean the bolt and then come back. Okay, bolt is clean. New washers on. into the hole and use a spring to hold it down. And that's now tight. So we're going to take this back out. Going to 
pull the center out. Well, I'm going to leave the spring out. I'm going to leave this piece out as well for the minute. Just going to nip this up by hand. Now we're going to fill it with oil and then we're going to prime the shock absorber. Four hundred and seventy mil. Okay, following with the agenda of making stuff, um, I've got this tool, which is a suspension tool, uh, but these pins were the wrong size. Uh, they're normally for like the R1s and fire blades. Uh, so I've had to make new pins, uh, smaller diameter so they'd fit into here. I've had to make this uh, tube so I can pull the center up. So, right. We've got this up and unscrew this. Put the top back on. Tighten that up. Okay, release. Okay. okay, now we can screw this back together. Well, actually, I'm just going to have to take some of the oil out because there's too much in there for, for me to work with. Uh, just need to top the rest of it back up and then it's ready to be screwed on. Okay, so one leg's done. I've also got my uh, compression indicator on there, so we can see how far the compression dives when we um, uh, when we're on track, doing uh, full braking. I do the same again with this one. We'll do it upside down. And do the bolt at the bottom, uh, and then we'll flip it, uh, drain the oil out of it, and then take the cartridge out. Okay, shocks are ready to go on. Uh, filled, primed, uh, 470 mil, actually take data, 468 uh, milliliters of 7.5 W. So what we've got in there now, clean, fresh oil, so that's job done. Uh, also the air gap was 98 mil. Um, I had to top the first one up a little bit. Uh, so they're both at 98 mil. Uh, and now we're gonna put them back in. going to nip these up in place because uh, I've got the triple clamp to go on top. Uh, without that up there I don't know how high I need to be.
oh, this job is getting more and more frustrating. Um, I've had to drop the, the shock leg down to get the belt in, uh, which is fine. But they've made this for an Aprilia RS660. They haven't supplied any bolts for it. The bolts that you have to reuse to get these back in, the heads are too big because they've machined it to a smaller size, yet no bolts. So I've had to go over to the lathe and machine these down so they fit into the holes. I mean, if you're going to sell something for something, <laughs> give the right belt.
I'm telling you, no upgrade is without his stress. This clutch lever was pointing right up because uh, it was butting up against this uh, uh, handlebar end. Um, I've had to take it off. I've had to belt sand the corner of this lever and there's a little plastic housing at the bottom. I've had to do that as well. Still high, but I'm not going to be using the clutch very much on track. It's, it's the brake I, need, I needed to get right. Um, without the seat on, it's difficult to tell, but that's reasonably there. Uh, this is still slightly high, but at least it's on. Uh, nothing is talked, so uh, once everything is uh, attached to where, where I want it, and then I'll um, go around talk, talking all the bits up. Uh, I took the tank off yesterday, you know, the tank uh, plate for the tank bag. I couldn't remember where the screws were. But thankfully, I found them, they were at home, so I've got those, and I also found the genuine grips that I'd um, swapped out, so they're going to go back on instead of the aftermarket ones. Um, So, uh, what I need to do now is get the rest of the front wheel on, tighten up the clamps, torque those up, get the mud guard on, get the wheel on, uh, sort the pads out, get the front down, come back, do the rear, sh uh, rear shock. Right, all the ancillary stuff's back, mud guard is on, uh, bits of plastic, everything is torqued up. Um, I've just got to put the front wheel on now and then do the brake pads. Uh, I'm not changing the tyres to slicks uh, until I get to Almeria. I'm going to do two days, there's four days on circuit. Uh, use Metzalatini slicks, you barely get 300 miles out of those um, in the last two days. So I'm going to try and save those for the, the, the last two days. So we're going to be going with road tyres. And to be fair, road tyres do a really good job on track anyway. Um, the last set of tyres I had on my uh, GSXR. Uh, I went from the uh, Metzler TD Slicks to Bridgestone uh, S22s and I did four or five track days with it. Uh, I was at Angle C and I still had life in it. So um, road tyres, they grip and they outperform most of us. So um, don't be shy of using road tyres on track.